I think you already explained. Um, uh, I think the Lilium Lab, um, I helped um, several companies, up to 60 companies, uh, with exploring the business phase in healthcare. It was um, uh, very good also to see the insights of all the companies and learn a little bit myself as well. It's very hard. I think ICT is one part, um, uh, in, especially in healthcare, in the business phase, is really a, a challenge. So I'm just going to go and walk you through uh, the e-health domain um, on a high level. Um, what about the, the challenges uh, you will be facing? Um, what is the medical perspective? And what kind of poss possible solutions uh, would there be? Um, I, I, I we do not tend to believe we will do things better, smarter, sort of like lean or something. Uh, I think we should do it slightly different. And different not only in ICD, but mainly in um, also the GP, the doctor has to do it slightly different. And I think the current process is not really um, according to, to new standards. So, and then there's quite a challenge on, on that side. So, what is the current situation? Um, for every, currently, for every, we're aging as we are. Currently, we have here in um, middle of uh, Europe, we have four working persons on every elderly person. Um, in about five years, this will be three to one, which is current situation nowadays uh, in the southern countries, right? in Italy, Spain, Greece, we have the current situation of three to one. And then at the days that we are old ourselves, we would have a situation of a ratio of two to one. Two people working for every elderly which is there, which by the way is current situation nowadays in China already. And so and this is the challenge we are facing. So let's innovate, you would say, and throw in some ICT and it will work out. That sounds marvelous of course. But actually the situation is that up until today 80% of ICT projects in healthcare fail. And it's not because we are stupid or so. So there are different things going on. And uh, yeah, I don't think uh, it's working out really great at the Beamer. So as, if you look at, at the top five challenges in healthcare, according to, um, um, yeah, to the healthcare domain, it is mainly high cost is always an issue, of course. Um, concerns about privacy and security of data it more like not knowing. Um, ICT systems cannot communicate to one another, it's quite clear, um, and uh, you would need more time to fill in the data. This is out from the perspective of the doctor, of course, and because it would, it would currently, you would, would have more time. Um, so here you see, um, there are, uh, for the financial structures, there's not really an incentive for the doctor to change. And his daily practices, that his waiting room is full, full of patients waiting there, sitting there in a row to get help. And if you would change that on a mobile or some situation at home, the doctor would have to change the way he, he's working in his current situation. So, and if somebody is helped at home, he will not get finance. The current situation is that uh, you will get, the doctor gets paid for every minute spent on the patient on the bedside. He's not getting paid for minutes not spent on the patient. So every innovation will be uh, killed immediately because you, you're saving money and, and, and not getting any money. So and those barriers. Um, one of the main barriers is uh, that there is a lack of ICT solutions, a lack of standardization. But I promise you, there are more than enough standards. And the good thing about standards is that you can pick out from the many which are there. I think we have a lack of people understanding those standards, understanding the real problem, understanding the need of both the patient as well as the doctor. What does he want? So let me explain 
um, in my words, what is the difference? What is the difference in current ICT systems, banking software, flying an airplane, or whatsoever? And let me compare the two specialists, the medical specialist and the pilot. If you go to this pilot, he can uh, fly on the automated pilot, um, and it works perfectly. And it's not like easy software or something. I mean, there is uh, decision support in there, there is, uh, and, and it will provide all information needed. Um, but what you see there, that all data he's using there, the system is using, is consistent data. If you compare it with banking software, you would translate the euro to a dollar, put in interest, uh, it's a plus and a minus, but it is a single set of data at that current moment in time. Uh, it is a transaction model. And if you look into the medical specialist, this is quite different. The medical specialist always has four steps. The patient comes in and he observes. The next step will be that he's going to evaluate with himself, but, only, but also with previously taken uh, papers, published papers. So he's going to look into the situation and he's thinking, okay, this patient with this set of data, and that needs to be translated to instructions and to actions in the medical field, uh, whether this is within the hospital or whether this is home care. And if we multiply that, um, and we take two doctors <coughs> at the same patient, same data, you would have to come to a combined uh, solution <coughs> for, uh, uh, for the patient. A decision should have been taken, will be taken. And if you take, for instance, two cardiologists, I have never seen the situation that both cardiologists say exactly the same about the same patient and the same data. So when you see this uh, euro to dollar, etc., consistent data, then you see in the medical field, it is never consistent data. It is always different, and it's good, because both cardiologists are perfectly right, or could be right. Um, so how would you connect those services? And, and if we go to standard, into the standards a little bit deeper, um, there's, there's widely in the yield um, uh, domain, there's, there's a lot of discussions about HL7 standards, which are uh, great, but what you will see that these are mainly for sending data to one another, from one hospital to another hospital, to the GP. But with the message bus, uh, which in fact it is, will never be able to input the data, because this message bus, bus is already sending um, what is in there. He will send you the outcome, this doctor says, uh, this number 60 is high blood pressure or whatsoever. But the receiver, the next doctor, will certainly like uh, to have his own interpretation of, of, of the data, not only the interpretation of what the previous doctor said. So the bus is good to send data to one another, but it will not help you to interpret the data. So, um, the University of London started um, 15 years ago with thinking how would we build the ideal electronic health record. Uh, they called it OPEHR, Open Electronic Health Record. Uh, and um, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, that evolved to a European ISO NAND standard. It is accepted, these are five chapters, 800 pages, and it will mainly explain you that you um, you would have to divide the system into different parts. Um, you would have to create, it is an information model. So on the one hand side, you would have um, the software model, and on the other side, on this side, you would have a sort of templating model. A template on how the doctor would like to see the data, his semantics of the data. So on the left hand side, you would have to store the data secure, as fast as possible, maybe, and locally, in the cloud. And it would have to, the system would have to eat this modeling system and these templates, we call them archetypes, in the OPHR world. So, if, um, and this validated model is being created by the doctor itself. So, in legal aspects, it would also take away the, the, um, the responsibility 
for the ICT department, and who is responsible in case of anything fails? Well, in this case, it is the doctor who is always responsible. But he's creating this template archetype, uh, he's putting it into his own workflow, and therefore, uh, it is his way and his solution uh, to looking at the data. Uh, I just explained it was uh, started a while ago. You could easily look for yourself. Um, and oh, the last line is the city of Moscow is, uh, for instance, also using it. Uh, currently, 20 million people are working on it. Um, and uh, the standard is accepted currently uh, in the UK, uh, Spain, Italy, most EU countries. The Netherlands is not so fond of the standard, to be honest. Because they like H07 a lot more, which is also great. We also use H07, but it is a different model. Um, what did we do? We built two stacks in the last years. Um, four years ago, we uh, started with the XML version. Uh, because everybody talked about XML, the main specifications of, uh, in this case, H07 is an XML. Um, but it was way too slow. And we open source the version, it's going to be used in the Hanover, for instance, to store all data which is in there, and then afterwards um, uh, go on and look at the data with SAP and with Microsoft um, and easily extract the data. The really fun of it, because uh, the queries of 10 minutes uh, are now down to two, three minutes, which I think is not enough. Uh, so we have the next version, Postgres database, great performance, um, which we believe um, it, yeah, is, is, is really needed. We didn't open source it, uh, that part. Um, and we might, I think we will in the future, uh, but we also have to find the right business case for it. Um, so, um, and, and what we mainly do, we perform in, a, in a quite a number of EU projects. And there we um, yeah, sort of uh, find out the hard way um, how you would have to, um, how you would do sophisticated measurements, how monitoring of patients with atrial fibrillation, for instance, and heart rate going up, uh, or measuring EEG, which is a 3D module of the, uh, of the brains. But let, let, let me go in a little bit deeper on this modeling of the data, and this semantic model. This is a screenshot. I hope uh, you can see it sort of. This is a template, an archetype, which I just grabbed uh, last Friday from the OBEHR website. Uh, the NHS, National Health Services here in the UK, they developed those archetypes. Um, they're freely available, you could look for them yourself. And I most likely uh, look at mind map for it, because then I also understand what it says. Um, and what you can see here, uh, this is about blood pressure. You get the data for blood pressure, um, and there is a protocol here. Yeah, but the overall view is that this will deliver you a sort of workflow. Yeah, and here in the protocol, you would have your, um, um, on the top side, the data which is gathered, numbers 50, 60, 100, 110. Um, but what you would also like to know, the doctor would like to know, is what is the cuff size, where was the position, uh, how do you put it, did the patient run up the stairs and it took his blood pressure, um, uh, what was the, uh, what is the sleep status, etc. and on what event, for instance, was this taken, should it be taken each day, uh, was it taken in the morning, etc. This is quite good to understandable for the medical specialist, for the doctor. Um, there is, there comes along, an editor for this, which I'm not going to say that um, the doctor can handle it very well. Um, but in this kind of, in, in this way, he would easily set his own um, way of looking at the data. Um, and as the system just eats and sort of eats these archetypes, these templates, uh, it will provi be provisioned right away on the spot. What is also there are validated translations. Uh, a medical specialist from the UK, the, the English part, and this one is Dutch, so a Dutch doctor did um, the Dutch part. Um, so now, um, 
Now you're sure, of course, that this is not some Google Translate. And, uh, and the doctor might also change slightly uh, the way of his questionnaires, etc. Because it is really not a one of one copy uh, from the same situation. Um, we also have to be aware that the archetypes for, for the Netherlands translated into English are different than UK archetypes transla translated into Dutch. And because Situation and the situation the workflow at the GP is quite different. So, in col collaboration with Yendo, um, we combined it into the WSO uh, environment. We deliver our stack with an API, um, but not the whole platform, that would be too much. So, this is current stack, uh, this is the architecture hosting. Platform as a service, um, apps, websites on it, uh, and then you would have your device independent applications and users. Going in slightly into detail, um, and these are the systems we're currently using from WSO2. Uh, this, I think it's a Dutch part, uh, hospital information system, and you always want it to connect to other services. Um, Standards again, and you will always see that uh, for each and every hospital you would need an implementation guide to connect. And it looks like you can connect immediately if this is really an the case. Um, and in this case, we would use an external trusted third, third party, which is in the Netherlands, would be um, a DVD. And for instance, a, a register where all the doctors in the Netherlands, in this case, are registered with a role. Um, well, it's a summary of this. Um, same archetype uh, used again uh, in Russian, I believe. Um, and what we what we could provide for the developers, we already used Swagger, and uh, good part for us is that WSO is doing the same. Uh, so integration is. Um, easier there. Um, but what we see is that still for developers it is too, too uh, well, challenging uh, to build applications <coughs> on top of it. We provide JSON uh, and um, um, once you fetch the JSON you would have a, uh, a validated uh, data protocol. So in that case you could easily build validated apps. But we, we still went a few steps further. So here you would see, for instance, um, a ESMA control questionnaire, which is a validated model from the doctor, from the GP. Uh, and I would like to show how you would insert that into an API and translate it into an application, because it's really different. This model is built by a professor, by a doctor, a medical specialist, and <coughs> you cannot one-on-one -on -one copy it to, to um, ask an ESMA patient to fill it in and, and do something with it. And so it needs a little bit of work. Um, we have quite good uh, documentation on it. And what we do in the end, uh, we thought, okay, let's, let's skip the API part. Let's build an HTML5 drag and drop GUI builder, which in fact delivers you the validated model, those archetypes built by the doctor. You can drag and drop them into uh, your GUI. Um, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but the list would be here. You could select an API from here, it would show you the old API which is in back, and you could drag and drop it to the right. And this is the part you could copy and use to do your own application and have something up and running quite easily. So this is where um, the services are provided from the API manager to different systems. For instance, a CMS like Lifeway or Drupal. And the, the identity provider would connect to the services and do the uh, identification authorization part. And we would provide the library, for instance, built, uh, um, we already built quartets in this case, which would be shown in a CMS, um, which would be HTML5, uh, but also native, of course. So these are the steps um, um, we are providing. Uh, and if you would 
And this, this is what it would look like. Uh, in light ray, this is, but in fact it is uh, it's a more high, so it doesn't really matter. This is the Russian um, um, archetype that I previously showed, but now makes it more high, so some nice colors uh, and some nice looking fields around it. All validated data drag and drop into the loop. Device independent, although I must say that um, there's a mobile device here, um, for doing home measurements like EKG monitoring, it should really be native. You need a sync service, you need a dedicated decision support model. On the mobile phone, you cannot rely on HTML5 on the mobile. That's not the mobile file. Uh, so the list, um, AAA authentication, audit trail by a trusted third party, and the WSO ID server, identity server. You can provide it in Lightray Drupal for any CMS WordPress, <coughs> maybe. Um, there, personally, then, our developers like the HTML5 part, but we are backend developers, not front end developers, so we could say whatever. It uh, could also be other frameworks, of course. Uh, and like said, native development on Android, iOS is not so possible. Um, and I think then, if you, um, we all go to this um, collecting all data, um, Google Fit. Um, I think uh, collecting all kinds of data for the patient, like walking around, is great, marvelous, once by itself. But for the medical perspective, it's quite useless. Uh, a doctor needs events, and he needs to know, is there something going on? And if there's not, if the patient is alive and kicking, it's fine, he doesn't need the data. So what we do with, for instance, data from Google Fit, um, there are a lot of providers putting data in there, uh, and what we could use, uh, what we use is the Google API and grab a purchase, purchase the numbers we would like to, and store that, but only that, in a medical health record. It is absolutely useless to, to fill it with any kind of data. So we try to be, uh, to, to, um, to split collecting everything and useful data. Um, currently we are uh, collaborating with the first few uh, front-end developers We're looking for more further steps uh, to create an ecosystem of medical validated apps which is quite different from any app um, and we would like to provide this to an hospital home care situation uh, with best of breed solutions um, in, 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 in a consortium of course that was uh, my presentation.